how do you get a universe from nothing? Hence all these books addressing this question, nothing. Everyone I have read talks nonsense. Now this is very interesting. To get rid of the obvious answer, which I'll come to in a moment, they redefine nothing. That's the way it's done. You redefine nothing. And <laughs> this idea that because something is physical, nothing must be. That is just sheer nonsense. It has no meaning whatsoever. And he goes on through the book and all sorts of definitions of nothing. And, and David Albert has this marvelous review. And he points out that the very last thing there nothing is, is nothing. But I got invited to the Harvard MIT Faculty Club, of which you may have heard. And I was invited to have an open dialogue with Alan Guth. Now, Alan Guth is the world's leading cosmologist at MIT. Very nice man, and he's the inventor of the theory of inflation. That is the idea that a very, very short time after the Big Bang, there was a massive acceleration in the expansion of the universe and so on. And it explains certain things and people still query it, of course. It's, there's a lot of speculation, but nevertheless, he is immensely famous and deservedly so. And I was having this debate and I was terrified, of course. He's the world's number one cosmologist and we're talking about things that involve God, which he didn't do, actually. His talk went like this. Let me tell you about the origin of the universe and inflation and so on. And we had 15 minutes each. And in the last 30 seconds, he said, of course, if you want to add God to that, that's fine, but I prefer not to. That was the total about God. Mm. I talked about God and um, received a lot of hostility, which is rather strange and such an erudite thing. But in the question session, I thought I'd ask him publicly. I said, Alan, you know, there's a question that I've been dying to ask someone of your eminence. Everybody is talking about nothing. And I said, tell us, when you use the word nothing in the context of the origin of the universe, do you mean what most of us mean by nothing? That is the absence of anything. He said, no, we do not. I said, thank you very much. So I know all about nothing, you see, as a result of that. It is massively fascinating that the only way to avoid God is foolishness. Now, hang that on, hang on. That is just fascinating. That's an aphorism worthy of putting on a sampler. That's just beautiful. Well, you the may only way send to avoid to God we is, can start a business. is foolishness. Um, no. The only way to avoid God in that context in that is, foolishness. Is, is foolishness when you're dealing with the concept of nothing. But there's something I need to say here because Christian people often say, well, what do you say? What is your answer as a Christian? And I've come to see this is important. And the way I put it very carefully is this. The universe comes from nothing physical. It does not come from nothing. It comes from God who is not physical. And one of the great assertions of Scripture is that God is spirit. And this turns materialism on its head. Materialism says there is material. There is no spirit. Yeah. The biblical view is there's both, but the primary one is spirit. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is material. The Word is God. The Word is spirit. All things came to be through him. That is, the material universe is not primary. Materialism says it is. Naturalism says it is. Scripture says it is not. God is primary. It's derivative. So the universe came from nothing 